Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. And today we're going to be looking at this little circuit board Christmas tree kit and how to build it and how the ring oscillator inside it works. So my friend brought this to me and he was wondering how to build this device and if I can help him teach him how to solder and stuff. So that's what I'm doing right now, teaching him how to solder and build this cool thing. And I'll explain a little bit about this uh, thing and explain how it works and I'll show you how to build it. Let's get started. All right, so first off, how this device works. So, it didn't actually come with an instruction manual, so I looked online and I found this instruction manual, but it's not very good. It's written in kind of translated Chinese, and so you can't really understand many of the instructions. And all it says is where to put all the capacitors and resistors. It doesn't really explain how this device works. And so I had to do some sleuthing on the internet to figure out, find a schematic for it. Now, I was originally going to make a schematic myself, but I decided that this would be easier just to look one up. And after a little bit of finding, I found a schematic for this Christmas tree device. So this is a schematic right here. And as you can see, it's got three transistors, three capacitors, six resistors, and 18 LEDs. And it's arranged in something called a ring oscillator format. All right, so now to how this ring oscillator works. So basically what happens is you're going to have the current flow through these LEDs, through this resistor, and through the capacitor, and to this transistor to ground. Now what's going to happen is this capacitor is going to charge up slowly because of the current flow, and because there's current flowing through here, it's going to turn on this transistor because transistors are activated by current. So that'll turn on this transistor, which means these LEDs will turn on, which means that this point will be at a virtual ground, which means that the current will flow backwards to this capacitor and discharge this capacitor, and so it's completely out. Now by the time this capacitor is charged from the current flowing through this transistor, once it reaches its full charge, then no more current will flow through this capacitor anymore. And because there's no more current, because the capacitor is full, this transistor will turn off. Now as soon as this transistor turns off, that will allow this capacitor to start charging, and while it's charging, this transistor will turn on. And then as soon as this, while this transistor is on, it will discharge the previous capacitor, or the capacitor right here. And then what will happen is it will light up the lights. And then as soon as this transistor is finished charging through this capacitor, and this will turn off, allowing the next capacitor to start charging, and the stage will move on and on throughout all the transistors until it, nothing happens. And this oscillation will continue forever and ever until the power is removed. So that's pretty cool. That is how a ring oscillator works. All right, so now to building this uh, Christmas tree device thing. So you've got the circuit boards that it comes with. The circuit boards come with the tons of LEDs, 36 LEDs, three transistors, six resistors, and three capacitors for each side of the tree. And there are two separate sides of the tree that interlock to each other, and they form two separate circuits. So the circuit you saw on the previous page, just think of that times two. And both of these Christmas trees is supplied by power. Power rails are ran together in parallel. So Elijah is going to show you how this uh, Christmas tree thing is soldered together. As you can see, a resistor is taken from the packaging, and the packaging is pulled off the sides of the resistor. And then after the resistor is free from its packaging, then it can be introduced into the Christmas tree. Of course, after being bent. So after the resistor is put into place on this custom-built circuit board, it can be completely reversed and soldered into place. Helping hands are super, well, helpful for soldering things like this. As you can see, he touches the soldering iron to the soldering point and touches the solder into place, which allows the solder to harden and form on the pad. Now basically, all you gotta do is add all the components into the circuit board in their respective positions, and you gotta make sure you line up the polarities correctly, and then you can basically solder in the components with a simple soldering iron. This soldering iron is pretty cool. It has an adjustable temperature, and 
yeah, it's not too difficult. All you gotta do is hold the soldering iron to the pad and touch it. Afterwards, it's always important to use some clippers to chop off the unused sections of wire that are coming from the leads that come from all the components that are soldered above on the surface. You just chop them off and cleans up the circuit board, it makes it a little bit nicer. Now it's time to connect the three separate circuit boards with some solder to form the final Christmas tree device. As you can see, you just have to slide together the two halves of the circuit board so the arrows line up, and then solder the two pieces together using the solder mounts in the middle and on the bottom and on the top of the circuit board. <laughs> oh wow. Okay, so you gotta line it up so that way the two positives yeah, yeah, two positives. Yeah, two negatives right there. And so that looks good. Oh, here, I'll hold that down for you. And then I'll do this. I'll hold that down for you. So solder that into place. Wait, the two positives. Okay. You just solder that into place. There we go. Makes it a little easier. All right. Side of the rest of them. I think this circuit board is really cool how everything can be soldered together and connected and then you've got the base here and the base every is just connected and everything kind of fits together and is soldered together. Makes for a really cool circuit board. Alright with that the little Christmas tree is done. I added the little battery pack to the bottom so let's put some batteries in this thing and turn it on. Alright now this thing looks pretty cool as you can see it's running right now. We've got all the lights flashing. And they're all kind of flashing randomly. And As you can see, all the lights are flashing, and they're flashing randomly right now. And they're doing that because there's a ring oscillator format, where the lights blink in that ring oscillator. But each of these LEDs is a special kind of LED. It's a type of LED that can actually change colors with a little circuit board inside. And so that's why the different light bulbs turn on kind of randomly because each of them turns on and off and when it turns on and off sometimes it resets the little circuit board inside sometimes it doesn't to whatever color and so they change colors in little random ways and so that's what makes this blink so randomly so if all these were just one colored LEDs then all the oscillations would look more patterned but because they're not then all the oscillations look completely random like this. And sometimes they all turn red for some reason, but anyway, that's pretty cool. There it is when it's completely dark out here. You can see a little bit better. But yeah, it's a pretty cool little Christmas tree that changes colors randomly. And when you don't touch it, it makes more random colors. But look, if you touch it, then it turns more red. It's interesting. Well, as always, thank you for watching and Merry Christmas.